Mars, the fourth planet in our solar system and Earth's near planetary neighbor, has always been something associated with great mystery. It is famous for its bright rust-colored surface from iron-rich minerals, its cold, thin atmosphere, and home to the largest volcanoes, mountains, and valleys in the solar system. The planet has been thought to harbor life and even have liquid water. And for a long time, many people believed ancient civilizations existed on Mars. Some believe that soon humans will face global catastrophes and we will have to leave the Earth. We've been studying the planet for a long time with the intention of sending humans there. But can humans survive on Mars? And what challenges do we face? Humans have wanted to explore Mars since Galileo Galilei first watched the planet. In the century that followed, astronomers discovered the planet's polar ice caps, and during the 19th and 20th centuries, researchers believed that they saw a network of long straight canals on Mars that hinted at a possible civilization. In the 1960s, robotic spacecraft began observing Mars with the United States launching Mariner 4 in 1964 and Mariner 6 and 7 in 1969. Even though at the time people were enthusiastic about finding Martian life, these missions revealed that Mars was a barren world and there were no signs of life or any civilizations like people had imagined would be there. The Soviet Union also launched some spacecraft towards Mars, but most of the missions failed. The two Russian craft, Mars 2 and Mars 3, operated successfully, but because of the harsh Martian dust storms, the craft was unable to map the planet's surface. The first successful landing was NASA's Viking 1 lander, which touched down on the Red Planet on July 20, 1976. The lander took the very first close-up pictures of the Martian surface, and the very first color photo of Mars. Of course, to everyone's disappointment, there were no signs of life. What it did find, though, was both the highest mountain and the deepest, longest valley in the solar system. Olympus Mons is roughly 17 miles, or 27 kilometers high. That's about three times as tall as Mount Everest. While the Valles Marineris system of valleys, which was named after the Mariner 9 Pro that discovered it in 1971, reaches as deep as 6 miles or 10 kilometers and runs east-west for roughly 2,500 miles or 4,000 kilometers, about one-fifth of the distance around Mars and close to the width of Australia. The next two spacecraft to successfully reach Mars was the Mars Pathfinder and the Mars Global Surveyor, which were both launched in 1996. There was a small robot on board the Pathfinder named Sojourner, which became the first wheeled rover to explore the surface of another planet. It weighed 25 pounds and covered 330 feet or 100 meters over 83 days in 1997. In 2001, NASA launched the Mars Odyssey probe. This probe found vast amounts of water ice beneath the Martian surface, mostly in the upper 3 feet or 1 meter of the planet's surface. It is unknown if there is more water that lies underneath, since the probe cannot see water any deeper with its limited instruments. The probe has been circling the planet ever since, and has the record for the longest serving piece of machinery to work at Mars, and it's still there today, and continues to operate. In 2003, Mars was to pass closer to Earth than at any time in the past 60,000 years. NASA took advantage of this and launched two rovers named Spirit and Opportunity. In a mission to find clues for water on the planet, these two rovers explored different regions of Mars, and both found signs that water once flowed on the planet. The amazing thing is that the rovers weren't supposed to last more than three months, but the two robotic geologists, which landed on opposite sides of the planet, have trekked for miles across the Martian surface and are still operational, with Spirit's mission ending on March 22, 2010, an opportunity which ended February 13, 2019. Both of the rovers set incredible photos of the planet, showing a vast and desolate alien world. In 2008, NASA sent the Phoenix to Mars, which landed in the northern plains in search for water. And it succeeded. It landed on May 25, 2008 in a mission to assess the local habitability and to also research the history of water. But the Phoenix was not built to survive the dark, cold, and icy Martian winter. And on May 25, 2010, operations were ended after repeated attempts to contact the spacecraft were unsuccessful. However, the Phoenix spacecraft succeeded in its investigations and exceeded its planned lifetime. 
In 2011, NASA's Mars Science Laboratory mission sent the Mars Curiosity rover to investigate Martian rocks and to determine the geological processes that created them. Curiosity landed in the Gale Crater on August 6, 2012. It sent back its first color image on August 6, 2012, and on September 7, 2012, Curiosity took a self-portrait. But it wasn't there just to take photos and selfies. Part of the rover's mission was to find water, and on September 27, 2012, NASA scientists announced that the Curiosity rover found evidence of an ancient stream bed showing that once upon a time there was flowing water and maybe even oceans on the planet. Despite the many bizarre photos out there showing weird things like faces, alien spacecraft, and even some photos of things that look like spiders or an alien face hugger, there is no real evidence that there was any life on the planet previously. So you may be wondering all this time why would we want to put so much effort and resources into a dead planet? If we know that Mars doesn't have life, then it really doesn't make any sense to send humans there unless it's possible to terraform the planet, which could take hundreds of thousands of years. The debate is that we are wasting our time even thinking about sending humans to Mars. One of the first men to orbit the moon, former U.S. astronaut William Bill Anders, was one of three crew members of the Apollo 8 program. He has said that sending people to Mars would be stupid because the public wouldn't be interested in funding such a mission. Despite this, there are many reasons why we have been studying the planet. Because Mars is close by in our solar system, it makes sense that it's an obvious target for exploration. But there are other reasons to explore the red planet, including the search for life, understanding the surface, and the evolution of the planet. It is an excellent place to investigate this question because it is also the most similar planet to Earth, including its land masses and the possibility that it once had oceans and seas like the Earth. Evidence suggests that the red planet was warmer, and it had a thicker atmosphere than it does now, which might have made it a habitable planet millions of years ago. But while life arose and evolved on Earth, Mars underwent serious climate change, and its atmosphere consists of 96% carbon dioxide, 1.9% nitrogen, and 1.9% argon, with other trace gases. Nothing like Earth's nitrogen and oxygen atmosphere. Many of you know SpaceX's Elon Musk, who says it could be possible to change the planet's atmosphere and wants to terraform Mars. The biggest problem is that there isn't enough carbon dioxide to support his plan. However, Mr. Musk says that humans could release sufficient gases from the Martian soil using the right technology. There could be two ways to do this according to scientists. The first approach would be to create an atmosphere sufficient for supporting liquid water on Mars' surface. That would allow humans to walk around and breathe air. The second one involves raising the planet's atmospheric pressure, so humans would only need to use small breathing apparatus instead of a bulky spacesuit. But there are problems with both of those approaches. Mars doesn't have enough carbon dioxide and only has enough to create 15 millibars of atmospheric pressure. Destroying Martian sedimentary rock would only release 12 millibars. If you want to compare that to Earth, our atmosphere reaches 1,000 millibars at sea level. Elon Musk isn't buying this, though, and his goal is to transform humanity into a multi-planetary species. In fact, his company, SpaceX, plans to send humans to Mars as soon as the year 2024. Mr. Musk once even spoke about warming up the planet by dropping nuclear weapons over the poles. Right now, Mars seems like a dry, dead planet. However, its polarized caps contain equal parts of water and carbon dioxide. Musk's idea is to vaporize these ice caps with nuclear warheads, which would release those materials in the air. Once the atmosphere got thick enough, the greenhouse effect would take over and energy from the sun, absorbed by the planet and released as infrared radiation, would become trapped. A clever idea, it could take firing thousands of them over the course of decades. And for those thinking, that would make the planet even less uninhabitable. Modern thermonuclear weapons can be designed to leave very little fallout. While this sounds like it might work, the problem with this is that Mars has no magnetic field to speak of. The planet did have a magnetic field when it was young, and its iron core was molten and convecting, much like how the Earth's core functions today. But 4.2 billion years ago, something shut off the planet's churning core. Scientists say that an excess of hydrogen split off from water molecules stored inside the Martian mantle 
which shut down convection and switched off the magnetic field forever. Some brilliant young scientist out there will need to come up with a way to create a magnetic field over this new atmosphere, or the sun will just strip it away as before. Going to Mars is going to be a difficult thing, and we face a lot of challenges, because we have to pack everything we need to survive the trip to our neighboring planet and back. The main goal would be to set up a permanent base that would eventually grow out into a city, and Elon Musk even had artist renditions of what he would like to see built, or what he thinks the Martian base would look like. Making Mars habitable is the goal of some very intelligent people, mostly because one day, either due to some environmental disaster, our expanding sun, or any other number of disaster scenarios, such as global warming, the Earth will one day become uninhabitable. SpaceX is currently working on the Starship, which is under development at the company's Boca Chica test facility in Texas, USA, that will send the first humans to Mars, which will be the first breakthrough that could pave the way for the creation of an extraterrestrial colony. And if we do overcome all the challenges, we could see a self-sustaining city on Mars by the year 2050. SpaceX wants to do testing and send humans to the surface of the moon in just five years from now. It will be an exciting time to see humans finally reach for the stars. We hope you enjoyed the video. Would you like to volunteer to go to Mars as part of the first colony? Let us know in the comments. And if you like the video, then activate the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know when a new video arrives. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.